good to us? Yes, he is. Have you enjoyed the love story series so far? Come on, I believe you can do better than that. You enjoyed the love story series so far? Amen. We have today, and then we have next Sunday. And um, I'm excited about what's going to happen. I'm believing God for some great things. How about you? Amen. And uh, I know God's going to do some great things. Let me tell you real quick about something that's going to happen um, after that. Um, not this coming Sunday, which is the last part. It's part six of the Love Story series. But um, the following Sunday, we're going to have a missionary from Guatemala with us, Brother Frankie Tyson. It's going to be an awesome time that we're going to have together. And we're just going to... Uh, we're going to be blessed, and you're going to be blessed, and we're going to share with you some of the things going on in that part of the world, and uh, we're also going to be facing up a trip uh, only for the serious and not for the faint of heart, uh, but in October, I plan to take about 10 people to Guatemala with me, and uh, we're going to uh, talk more about that and uh, what God's going to do there and give you an opportunity to get involved in that. And I believe God is really going to bless us and help us. Let me take just a moment to say a special thank you for all of those who have worked so hard to make this series come to pass the way it has. Many of you out here that come and you enjoy the service and whatever, you don't realize the behind-the-scenes work that has to go into making it happen. And uh, my hat's off to the lights, the camera, the media, the musicians, the singers, the staff, the people that are organizing it to make it happen. Uh, because uh, we put in Saturday mornings while many people are still watching their cartoons or whatever it is you do on Saturday mornings. Since uh, Adam's been on that shift that he's on, we've been digging in pretty hard for about three hours here at the church. And so um, I thank God for it. I thank God for willing people, committed people, dedicated people, and uh, we're blessed to have each and every one of you. Likewise, our life groups, man, we're right in the middle of the first semester, uh, about five weeks in now. We're having a great time with it. We just really enjoyed it, and I know that you're enjoying the life groups as well. Um, I'm so excited about it, and I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, so I'm just going to hush and just get on to deeper love and talk to you about that. But uh, we have some very special things coming for us in life groups in the summer semester. And um, <clears throat> we've got plenty of time to talk about that. Uh, I will remind the pastoral staff, though, we do have a meeting right after service today, uh, a planning meeting to plan the balance of the year. And uh, so hang with us, uh, those on the pastoral staff, and um, uh, we're going to get right at it. Turn with me, if you have your Bible, to the book of Song of Solomon. Chapter number 7, as you're turning there or looking intently upon the screen, whatever you may do, um, Song of Solomon comes, I believe, right after Ecclesiastes and right before Isaiah, if, if you know, if you're having trouble with that. But nonetheless, the easiest way is to just look right there at the screen. That don't dismiss that you ought to know where it's at in your Bible, though. Technology can spoil us. Did, let, me have you, let me help you understand this. How many of you, you don't even remember your friend's phone number no more because you got them on speed dial, you just hit... The number one or number two or whatever. And so uh, I'm trying to help you exercise your brain so you can uh, be all right when you get old. Are you hearing me say amen? And I don't know about you, but the mirror's telling me it's getting closer every day. So <laughs> anyway, um, I was driving yesterday. I was with Ken and Tara, and uh, um, he asked me about, was I about to turn 50 or something like that because I made one of them slow decisions and then we was about to get on the interstate and go to Adam's house and he asked me, did we need to go south or north? I said, don't be talking to me about getting slow. <laughs> we was at exit three. He lives on Harriet's Bluff or off of that exit. So anyway, um, nonetheless, so be careful what you can step into. Amen. But uh, nonetheless, we have talked about the art of attraction. We learned in the art of attraction that there was 
spiritual attraction that's really first and foremost, and there was emotional attraction, and then there was the physical attraction. Now, we get it all backwards because, you know, when that hot babe walks by, whoa, hallelujah. Huh? And somebody said, y'all remember uh, coming to America, Eddie Murphy? There is a God somewhere, is what he said. You remember that? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm not going to rehearse that, but... <laughs> It was kind of funny, but, um, and you ladies, you do the same thing. I mean, you're a little bit more discreet about it, but this guy comes by, he's all ripped up with a six-pack and all that, and I'm not talking about the suitcase of Budweiser. I'm talking about, you know, he, he's just ripped up, and, and, but y'all are real discreet about it. But y'all appreciate it as well. Y'all with me? And y'all will say, I'm not visual. <laughs> They're visual when they want to be. Are y'all with me? Say amen. I have found out as I have studied in this right here, I'm going to tell you two the needs of a woman. Let me tell you, I'm going to put it in two, two, um, two words right here. There are times where she needs a lover boy. And then there are times she just needs a yard boy. <laughs> oh, y'all, I'm going to explain that if the Lord would help me this morning. I'm, just, I'm, going to, I'm going to just let that one simmer and cook for a moment. But we talked about the art of attraction. Then we talked about dating and I, I told you that we're really mixed up in the way we dated. You remember that? That was a pretty uh, uh, tough message on dating and biblical courtship and all that stuff. Remember we talked about the virginity cloth and all that? Yeah, y'all remember and y'all met my friend Raleigh, my dog. Y'all remember Raleigh and we brought him to the screen for you. And uh, anyway, uh, so, and then we talked about great sex and we had a big crowd that day. Are y'all with me? Say Amen. <clears throat> We had over 120 or 30 views on YouTube for that message as well. So uh, those that didn't get it here went, and went back. And my, I don't know if maybe, matter of fact, I had someone e email me and said, look, uh, my family or my wife wasn't there. Man, you need to go ahead and ma make sure you got that on the YouTube channel. Are you all with me? I had a lot of comments about that. <clears throat> it turned out real good. So, so God blessed us. And then last week we talked about marital conflict, and it was kind of ironic because on Saturday before I preached the message, me and Adam's throwing the baseball in the yard, and wham, I got hit right in the eye with a baseball. Never been hit in the eye, and then I know someone told me at the restaurant yesterday, well, you're getting old. Your reflexes ain't what they used to be and all that stuff. And um, Anyway, I said, God sure has a sense of humor because I had to come and preach. I still got a semblance of a black eye, but it was really black last week. Are you with me? So marital conflict. So um, anyway, uh, we got past the conflict. And let me, let me tell you, um, on Monday of last week, this is kind of funny. It's real true, true story. Uh, Scott, wave your hand over there. Uh, he was with me. Uh, as you know, I'm kind of a backyard mechanic. Brother Brian is the real mechanic in the house. But uh, nonetheless, uh, AJ or, or Scott called me and said, man, this, the, something's wrong with this truck, whatever. Bottom line is the, the axle, the the four-wheel drive, the front left axle had broken out, and then, the, the, you know, I needed to change them. So I go over there, and I'm in my good clothes. Of course, yeah. I'm in my good clothes, and I said, well, it won't be that bad. I, you know, I wasn't thinking about that thing slung grease everywhere when it come apart. Well, anyway, I, I just decided, man, I just, uh, ain't no sense in driving all the way back home and whatever. I'm just trying to do this neat. Wrong. You can't do that. So next thing you know, I have got grease on this good shirt that I had on. I said, Lord, have mercy. Well, maybe I can save the pants. So, you know, we put some cardboard down. Next thing you know, I've done wiped my hands, and, and, and by the time this two or three hours is up, I look like a grease monkey. I'm talking about head to toe. And what happens? My phone rings. I look, Kelly Saint. I said, oh, Lord. So, I, hey, what are you doing? What is taking so long? By the way, you're supposed to be able to do that in 15 minutes. It's, you've got zippers on them, you know, right? That's the way women think about mechanical things. <laughs> anyway, so uh, nonetheless, uh, I, uh, I said, well, no. And then Scott or somebody said something about some clothes. But she said, are you in your good clothes? <laughs> and I said, well, I really didn't want to. Don't tell me you didn't wear your good clothes over there to work on that truck. I said, honey, before I get home, what I want you to do is go to YouTube <laughs> And go ahead and watch that message I preached last Sunday on conflict. Go ahead and watch it one more time before I get home. <laughs> hey, Lordy. So uh, anyway, I started talking about baby, sweetheart. <laughs> so today I want to talk with you about deeper love. And I want to talk with you about um, 
being in love, but I want to tell you, there is more to love than what you thought at the start. There's more to the relationship than just the physical attraction. There is a maturing that takes place. There's a lot of water that's going to go under the bridge. There's going to be some fights. There's going to be some arguments. There's going to be some apologies. There's going to be some I told you so's. And all of these things are going to happen, and that's called life. That's part of it. But as you go further in your relationship, especially if you talk to people that have been married a long time, uh, you're going to find out that, that the relationship gets better. It, it deepens, if you will, and the commitment likewise should get better, and it should deepen. Uh, I heard about a couple that had just gotten married, and they said uh, married life is frustrating. They said in the first year of marriage, the man speaks and the woman listens. <laughs> the second year of marriage, the woman speaks and the man listens. In the third year of marriage, they both speak and the neighbors listen. <laughs> Isn't that how it is sometimes? <laughs> Amen. So um, anyway, I, I don't know about you, but I... The other day I found a picture, an old picture. It came from 1984, the year I got married. And uh, I graduated high school on June the 2nd and got married on June the 30th. That was 28 days later. And I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying it worked for me. I had found the, the right one. So uh, if you found and, and it was hard to convince a lot of people of that, too, because a lot of people said, man, you're an idiot. And, uh, you know, that may have been debatable for a while <laughs> for them. And, uh, but nonetheless, as time went on, some of them have been divorced three times, and we're still around. Are you with me? Say amen. Well, give the Lord praise. And if the Lord should tarry, and Kelly hangs around till June the 30th, it'll be 30 years. Amen. So, uh, well, praise the Lord. Amen. And she can't leave because if she goes, I'm going to go with her. <laughs> Are you with me? But... Um, so, but I was looking at a picture, and the picture was me and Pastor Darrell Glass. He's gone on to be with the Lord now. And um, he was standing outside of the sanctuary with his hand on the knob, just about. He was waiting for the sound of the music for him to open the door and for us to walk in. I was the same height that I am now and about 40 pounds lighter. <laughs> Are you with me? And uh, had all my hair. And, uh, you know, uh, time has a way of causing things to go away and to change colors. Are you with me? Say amen. And so I look over the years and things have changed. Now, the women, they all get better with age. I was paid to say that. So, now I'm only... <laughs> no, the, the, the thing is, is they don't mind keeping things new. They'll go down to the body shop or to or, or the beauty shop. That's what it is. <laughs> Lord, help me, Jesus. So, I'm thinking of cars and got women and cars mixed up, but nonetheless, they, they'll go and keep things right, you know, and the guys, we don't worry about it as much and so on and so forth. By the way, they ain't visual, so what's it matter, right? <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, so... Um, let me get back on track here. But yesteryear and yesterday, how many? I want to challenge you to go home and look in your album, and, and you're going to see that things have changed. And uh, that's just how it is. But um, the real thing I want to get to today is, here, here's the real deal, and it's kind of what you need to know, and it's why we're here today, is the, to answer the question is, how can I build a relationship that will last a lifetime? How can I build a relationship that will last a lifetime? That's a good question. And let me just say this to you before we get into the Scripture. The odds of making it um, are not good. People talk to me about the odds of dying skydiving, and people feel like if you go, you're going to die. My wife's one of them. But uh, nonetheless, uh, that's like saying if you drive a car, you're going to die, or if you do this or that, you're going to die. But the chance of your marriage not making it is 50%. And I'm sad to report to you, it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. The odds are one in two fail. In the world and in the church. 
The only way to change that is to really be a Christian in deed and not just in word. The only way to make the odds better in your favor is to be an adherent to the Word of God, one that truly lives a Christ life and is not just a member of a church body somewhere, but they really look up to the Lord as the Lord of their life, then your odds will fall in your favor. If you take this book as the authority for your life, then the odds will stack up for you. That is the only way to help the odds. See, God, I believe, wants to do a miracle here today. I believe that he wants the best for you, and I believe he wants the best for your marriage. I think, personally, that God wants to reorder some of your marriages, rearrange. I'm not talking about different men, different women. I'm believing God wants to reorder and reconstruct your marriage. He wants to do that. He wants to give you an abundant blessing, an abundant life. Can I tell you something before we delve off into this? That people are looking for the perfect spouse. Now, I have been in ministry for a long time, about 27 years, and I've had people come to me to tell me what all was wrong with their wife. I've had people come to tell me what all was wrong with their husband. And they were legitimate. I mean, some of them were just dogs. On both sides. But I, I got a pastor friend of mine. He will do counseling with couples. And when the couple comes in, he gives them a legal pad, both of them. And he says, I want you to write down all that's wrong in your marriage. And man, they get, they starting to write, here, oh, all that's wrong with your spouse, write it down. And just before they jot that pen, I mean, they're ready, man. They're, that pen's smoking. He said, hey, but before you do that, I want you to save that to the bottom of the page. He said, but the first ten lines on the legal pad, write me ten good things about your wife. Write me ten good qualities about your husband. Now, I know some of you like ladies are saying, man, they ain't ten. He said, but you got to find ten good things to say, and then I'll hear what's wrong. Anyway, you'd be surprised how many times my friend don't even get to the bottom of the page once he works through that. And they, well, but see, because what we do is major on the minors. We get so caught up on our little pet peeve, we overlook that 90% of them, are, they're real good people. 90% of that husband is good, but you got 10% that you hate. Well, let's focus and work. You know, highlight that that is good. Try to shore up that that's bad, but don't focus on that. Now, uh, let's, let's say uh, today I want us to do... Um, Something different. I want, us to, I want us to investigate going deeper in our relationship. Deeper than just surface. Deeper than just physical. So right now we're going to look at this scripture. And um, the first three verses. How beautiful your sandaled feet, O princess daughter. Now I, I just want to draw something right here for you. And he's talking to the Shulamite, which by the way, his wife... Uh, Shulamite in that language it basically is the feminine version of Solomon, which is his name, uh, given to her. It's the feminine of his name. So he calls her basically by his name. But how beautiful are your sandaled feet, O princess daughter. Now I want you to contrast this with chapter 4. We're not going to go there, but I'm going to take you there. I'm just going to help you remember that. You remember when he looked at her in chapter 4? He started up here, and he worked his way down, you know, her hair, her eyes, ooh, they were so pretty, her nose, he talked about, and her beautiful lips, and there was her teeth, and they all had a twin, none was missing. Ah, and her breath was so good, and her lips were so pretty, and her neck, ooh, it was pretty, and he went on and talked about the gazelles, and... Uh, twins of a fawn, uh, or twin fawns of a gazelle. Y'all remember that, man? And he went from here to here. And he summed her up 
And he talked about how beautiful she was. Now, this time, water has gone underneath the bridge. It's later in life. It's uh, a lot has passed by. Things has gone on. Life has been lived, so to speak. Years have taken place. History has taken place. Work has taken place. Relationship, etc. And then he, now he just sort of looks at her feet. How beautiful are those sandaled feet? Now, he hasn't forgotten about her. Remember, we found out in the very first chapter that she wasn't quite as pretty as he was telling how pretty she was in his eyes, but he said, you've been out in the heat, girl. And she said, yeah, I sure have. My, my brother's made me work in the fields, and that's why I'm all leathered up, and that's why I look bad. And we all thought she was just a raging beauty like Bathsheba was, but not so. But he says, in my eyes you are. Are you with me? Say amen. But now he's taken her. He's treated her like a princess, if you will. Time has gone by. You know, they got their dating on, or they were attracted. Then they dated. Then they had honeymoon night. Y'all remember that? And then they had conflict. And he come home last week and been out all night, and he was wet with the dew, and he was wanting some loving, used all the pet names, honey, sugar, spice, sweet queen, and of uh, my house or my double wide trailer or whatever. You remember Anyway, but, but he got so mad he put his fist through the door. You remember that? And then she, you know, she was giving him the silent treatment. She was laying in bed. I, I didn't put my robe on and da-da-da. I ain't getting up and whatever. But the Bible said her heart longed for him. She really wanted him. She was so saying no and meaning yes. And she got up and finally went to the door. And lo and behold, he was gone. He took her at her word. He went to his garden to pray and sort of settle his spirit and calm down. But what I'm saying is life has been lived. He looks at her now and says, look at those sandal feet, oh princess daughter, and your graceful legs like jewels. It's amazing. Watch this now. Uh, honeymoon night, he started here and he worked his way down. And now he's older and he starts here and working his way up. Are y'all with me? Y'all going to stay with me? All right. I bet you are. So <laughs> how beautiful are your sandaled feet? And he's talking to her. Uh, you know, in chapter 4, as he was talking to her, I think he was thinking about himself. Uh -huh. He's talking about her, oh, and he talked about how beautiful she was and all of her attributes and assets and all those things. Talking about her, thinking about himself most likely. Here he looks at her and says, How graceful are your feet and your sandals, O queenly maiden. And then he gives, he says, Your rounded thighs are like jewels. Are you with me? He said, uh, Your rounded thighs are like jewels, the work of a master's hand. Your navel is a rounded bowl and never lacks mixed wine. Your, I don't know if you should tell your wife this, but your belly is a heap of wheat. I don't know if that means you've just been eating too much, girl. I don't, I don't know. But in that day, in that day, and in that custom, and in that time, it would have been a compliment. Are you with me? Say amen. Uh, so uh, it never lacks blended wine. Your waist is like a mound of wheat encircled uh, by lilies. Your breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. He hadn't gotten that out of his mind anyway. Uh, so he says, you're my princess daughter. Now, you got to understand, she was not necessary. He was looking up to her as the most precious thing in the world to him. So he says to her, you're the most precious thing in the world to me. I don't care. You may be, uh, have leather skin. You may have been way worn. You may be weary. We have been through life together. We have fought. We have loved. We have done this. We have done that. But we come down to the end, and here we are, and I'm still in love with you. Are you hearing me say amen? That's right. Amen. So now let me say this to you. How many of you have been married more than 30 years? Let me see your hand. There's a sprinkling of you out there been married more than 30 years. I'll tell you something. If the only man that Kelly could have loved was the man standing outside the Floyd Road Church of God on June 30th of 84, I'd be in trouble. Because since then, I've gained 40 pounds or more, lost most of my hair. It's just gone south or something. I don't know. It's gone away. And so if the only man um, she could love was that man, then that man's gone. 
Are y'all with me? Say amen. Um, so what I'm saying is time has a way. That's why the Bible tells us not to trust in our, our beauty because if we're not careful, the outward beauty anyway is fleeting. Now, I know we can, we can, we can work on it. <laughs> And I'm not saying we ought not work on it. I think we ought to present ourselves as nice as we can because we are the tabernacle of the Lord. Are you with me? Say amen. I think we ought to take care of our body. And, and by the way, one of the summer life groups will be bod for God. I will preach four messages on that, our body being the temple of the Holy Spirit and how we treat it matters. This is yes and this is no. We're going to have a great time with that. But listen. We've all changed in our relationship. Some of you got taller. Some of you got wider. Some of you put on weight. Some of you took off weight. Some of you had habits, and now you've gotten over them. And some of you didn't have them, and now you got them, and whatever. But here's the deal. Our spouses, man and woman alike, they need to know some things. First of all, uh, we talked about how can I build a relationship that's going to last forever. That's, that's what we really need to know because all of us, want to know how can we make it last forever. I, I love to talk to old couples that have really, and my wife has this desire to talk to old couples or to look at it. How many of y'all watch The Notebook? Come on, the movie The Notebook? Yeah, 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 man, my wife cries every time, and I do too. So uh, that's how it is. But nonetheless, because you look at people that have made it. Now, let me say this. The first thing you're going to have to do to work on making it last forever, to build a relationship and make it last forever, is to have a deeper appreciation. Brothers, you've got to have a deeper appreciation for her. Ladies, you have to have a deeper appreciation for him. Sometimes we walk through life and we say things that would make someone believe that our wives or our husbands are just dispensable, like we could just forget about them like the trash we just threw out. And while that might be comical in some setting, and it might be something to laugh at, it is, an ab it, it, it is absolutely untrue. They cannot be just tossed aside. Marriage in the Christian home is not disposable as one would think. Let me give you uh, an illustration of Pastor Keith Lindsay. Um, he hated, he hated, loathed, and detested gardening and planting and uh, he said to his wife years ago you know uh, you know when they were dating he would do it because you do anything when you're dating ladies you got to remember that do anything when you're dating you're just trying to set the hook well after they got married I ain't planting another flower I'm not you know spreading compost and fertilizing I'm just not doing that and he said now we've been married 30 years he said, I'm out there in the front yard. I've got a halogen light on a little stand. I'm on my knees. I'm black with dirt. And I'm planting pansies. He said, I'm spade, you know, spade in one hand and a pansy in the other hand. And I'm just doing, you know why? He said, because I've learned to love what she loves. I personally don't care nothing about gardening, don't care nothing about horticulture, don't care nothing about flowers and plants, but I've learned to appreciate the things she appreciates. He said, one day we come home, and uh, he said, my wife and I are polar opposites. He said, I love, now this guy's probably, uh, he's, I think, 57, 58 years old. He said, I love the, the Born Identity movie series. Y'all know the Jason Bourne and all of that. And he said, my wife loathes it, hates it, and detests it. He said, but I come home on a Saturday, he said, after we had planted them flowers, he said, uh, a day or so before, he said, and my wife had the trilogy at that time, had all three of them. She said, honey, if we start now, we can watch them all before bedtime. He said, now what is this? What this is is she didn't like it. She said, but I've learned to appreciate what you appreciate. I've learned to like what you like. Are y'all hearing me say amen? And so it's, it's like you've got to try it sometime. Now, Susie's out of the question. I'm glad my wife... Don't like it, because I'm not doing it. I done tried that one time. I'm just not going there no more. Are y'all with me? Say amen. But anyway, I, I need to move on. Um, so she, he says to his wife, he says, honey, you're learning to love what I love. Amen. So in verse number four, he says, your neck is an ivory tower. 
Your eyes are like the pools of Heshbon by the gates of bath -Rabbin. He said, your nose is like the tower of Lebanon looking toward Damascus. And you got to understand, in those days, these would have been great compliments uh, to her. She has become the white and beautiful ivory. Uh, the thing, um, uh, and you got to get this. I mean, you know where ivory comes from. I'm not talking about the soap. Are y'all with me? Something has to die for that precious ivory to be harvested, to, to, to get it. And likewise, for you to build a relationship, a deeper love that's going to go a long time, sometimes we have to die to ourself to lift up the other one. Are you with me? Say amen. So this is when God will take your marriage to another level, when we begin to die to ourselves in, in place of another, when we look for them and um, want to, to help them and to, to lavish our love upon them. So you need a deeper appreciation. Next, you need a deeper, uh, there will be a deeper need. You've got to understand, you've got to realize there's a deeper need than just surface things. Are you hearing me say amen? <clears throat> As I said when we started out, there are times uh, <laughs> when you are her knight in shining armor. Are you with me? And man, she's just over the moon for you. And it's a great night, and you go to the steakhouse, and you come home, and, and, and the mood is right. And she's just in love with you, and Lionel Richie's song is playing all night long. Uh, and in the confines of marriage, let me reiterate, in the confines of a marriage between a man and a woman, let me reiterate, sex is a beautiful thing. And through that night, you become her lover boy. She's your lover girl. But then you, she was so nice last night, you wake up and you need to get that yard work done because today you're a yard boy. <laughs> I don't know how things turn so easy like that sometimes, but nonetheless, I guess it would work both ways, at least they say. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I'll let you all uh, tell me how that works out for you. But the question is, is what is it that you need? The question that I need to ask is, what does Kelly need? She needs to ask, what is it that I need? So we come to a deeper appreciation of them, and we learn more about their needs. I'll tell you something. I wish I had printed this, and I didn't print it. But everybody has intimacy needs, whether that is respect, whether that is um, uh, security, uh, comfort, uh, whatever your intimacy needs are. And um, Dr. John Vining wrote a list of ten, and he said everybody has intimacy needs. And uh, many times for men, it's respect. Many times for women, it's security. They want to feel like everything's going to be all right, no matter, what they, no matter how bad the fight, no matter what went wrong, what went south. They want to know that, okay, we're still okay. John Vining said that, and I use this in marital pre-marriage counseling anyway, uh, and sometimes in post-marriage counseling. And, uh, and what he said is this, that while all of us have intimacy needs, everybody has a top three priority of intimacy needs. Kelly and I went to this class a number of years ago. Dr. Vining was here at the old church, and he said, I want you ladies to write down the top three intimacy needs of your husband. Brothers, I want you to write down the top three intimacy needs of your wife. He said, rarely ever can the wife guess his and he guess hers. I'm very proud to say that Kelly and I, all three, she guessed mine, I guessed hers. That was kind of unique. In fact, he held that up as an example. But here's the deal. The problem is this. If you've got ten intimacy needs, and husbands, you're working yourself to death trying to fulfill five, six, and seven, listen, that doesn't matter what you do and how much you spend on five, six, and seven. If it's not her top three intimacy needs, it's not going to do you any good. Some of y'all are going to ask me for that survey. I know y'all are going to want them questions. And that's okay, because you need to find out what the, what the top need is. Is it respect? Is it, is it that intimacy? Is it uh, uh, um, security? Uh, what is it? And once you know, 
You don't have to work. You can work smarter and not harder. So you need to find that out. I'm going to have to get it before I can tell that. So a deeper appreciation, a deeper need. And then you need a deeper respect. I want us to look at verses 6 through 9 now. How beautiful you are and how pleasing my love. And, uh, you know, with your delights. Now, uh, your stature is like that of a palm. <laughs> you remember? Remember the saying we said, the climate of palm tree? Huh? All right. Your stature is like that of a palm tree, and your breasts like the clusters of fruit. Now, I know some of y'all are, oh, Lord, he, is he still in the Bible? Yes. Yes, I am still in the Bible. And, and some of y'all say, oh, 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 you're talking, so read your Bible. Huh? Rejoice with the wife of thy youth, and let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And all the brethren said. Solomon says, I will climb the palm tree. I'll take hold of his fruit. That means exactly what you're thinking right now. May your breasts be like clusters of grapes on the vine, and the fragrance of your breath like apples. Woo! -hoo! He's saying, he said, may your, may your breasts be like the clusters on the vine, and may your breath be like apples. Woo! I hope she has uh, brushed her teeth this morning. You know, and your mouth like the best wine. May the wine go straight to my beloved, flowing gently over the lips and teeth. Now I want to show you something because I flip back to that verse where he's talking about climbing the palm tree. We've got to deal with climbing the palm tree for a moment. I'll tell you how to climb the palm tree. <laughs> I need two volunteers. No, I'm only teasing. I'm only <laughs> Did you know in the state of Florida, in Broward County, it is illegal to climb a palm tree? Now, I'm not talking about women now. <laughs> to climb a palm tree in Broward County, it is illegal to climb with spikes like the electricians use. Um, it is illegal to do that because of the, the damage it causes to that palm tree. Are y'all hearing me? Say amen. Now, so I have come up with this ingenious thought here. Then now Broward County came, and that, that is a law. It is palm tree abuse law. I'm not kidding. You know why? Because you just strap in your spikes, and then you just grab onto the tree and just climb and climb, just headed toward the fruit with no regard for the palm tree just to get to its fruit. Now, I know, brothers, just bear with me for a moment. Getting rough, eh? So, if we can just get to the fruit, we ain't worried about the tree. Come on back down. Now, Broward County come up with a way to properly climb a palm tree. And it is almost like a tree climber that deer hunters use. And it has a piece that goes over your feet with a, uh, a strap over your boots there. And you embrace the palm tree. And pull your feet up. And then it gently locks down. Are y'all with me? And then you slide up the palm tree and embrace the palm tree. And pull your feet up. And then you push up and embrace the palm tree. And then you pull your feet up. And then you go up and you embrace the palm tree. And then you embrace the palm tree. And then you embrace... Y'all get it. So rather than just climbing the palm tree, we embrace the palm tree. So now, now y'all think I'm playing that is a genuine law. You cannot climb the palm tree down there with spikes. That's how it is. So then there's the tree climber method. And I just want to tell you the tree climber method is going to work better for you, brothers. Uh, let me say it like this. Um, years ago, I preached a series um, it's been a long time ago, and it was on love and um, getting things right with marriage and all that stuff. And I likened your marriage to a bank account, and I talked about how we make deposits and we make withdrawals. Are you with me? And I talked about how 
Sometimes it's going to take a large deposit to cover some of the withdrawals you're making. Huh? Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but you probably have experienced at some point in your life what it was like to be overdrawn. Huh? I remember back in the early days of marriage, I opened a piece of mail from the bank. I could have started a fire <laughs> with six or seven uh, what they called overdraft notices. And by the way, that, that ain't no good for your marriage. Are you hearing me? Say Amen. That'll cause you to fight real quick, man. You'll be in conflict like that, and you've got to get that worked out, and you've got to get it right. But what I'm saying is this. A bank account works like this. You have to make deposits. You have to make regular deposits. Because if you're writing checks, the bank is going to honor that check if the money's there. In your marital relationship, brothers and sisters, you better be depositing regularly into the love bank. Because if you're not depositing regularly into the love bank, you're going to write a check that your bank can't cash. What I'm saying is, listen, if you're depositing regularly into the love bank, you might even do something stupid and write a crazy check like I did one time. Huh? Yeah, I, I told you all about the story when Kelly and I, we were married about, uh, we got married in June. This was in December. So we've been married six months. I took her to work one day. She was insurance secretary uh, at an insurance company in town. I dropped her off from work, went to the recruiter, and joined the service. I'm not talking about talked about it, discussed it, or any of that. I'm talking about signed the dotted line, went ahead and took the test, and got a ship date. I picked her up from work. She said, how was your day? I said, well, I joined the service today. I joined the Air Force. She said, you did what? I said, I joined the Air Force today. What do you mean? I mean, I'm leaving in uh, December 29th to go uh, to MEP Center, and then April 15th is when I'm leaving. You did what now? That was a serious withdrawal. Huh? I don't recommend you do it that way. There's another time I went and bought a John boat. I didn't talk to her about it. Man, she needed some other things. We needed some other things. I didn't talk to her And uh, so I made a serious withdrawal. I'm saying this, as you stand with me, if you have not, if you've not made some healthy deposits, what does a deposit look like, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. A love deposit looks like this. Anything you do to help her. I'm not talking about you bought groceries this week because you're eating too. Are you with me? Say Amen. I'm talking about something special you do. I heard our former overseer, he said, I want y'all to know my wife makes my coffee every morning. He said, she um, brings me my newspaper in my Lazy Boy so I can drink my coffee and watch or look at my newspaper every morning. She does that for me, he said. He said, but what you don't realize is every night I massage her feet and her back because that's what she likes. Are you hearing me? Say amen. So making deposits is it. Listen, hey, friend, I make Kelly's coffee nine out of ten mornings. I promise you. That's just part of it. I get up, I make the coffee. I normally fix it up bring it to her. Sometime I'll get a granola bar and take it to her in bed and say, I have served you breakfast in bed. <laughs> a little cheesy, but nonetheless, any kind of deposit that you make, whether you stopped off somewhere and bought her a necklace on your way home and it wasn't Valentine's Day or whatever, or maybe you ordered her something sweet, or maybe you decided to do something that she's been wanting you to do. Or maybe, ladies, you done something out of the norm for him. He got home and lo and behold, there's that golf club he'd been wanting. Woo! Praise God. Maybe it's that new bat. New glove. I don't know. Maybe it's a set of tires for your four-wheeler. Or maybe it's just a four-wheeler. I don't know. It ain't got to be that. It could be, it could be a card. It ain't got to be money involved. It could be a card. 
that just simply says, you know, oh, with a crayon written, I want you to know I love you and I think you're the best in the world. Leave it laying on the table. Leave it laying where she's going to find it. Leave it laying where he's going to find it. Say things that are meaningful. Make some deposits. And let me tell you this. How many of you know, the more deposits you make, the more you put in there. I know I told Tanya some months ago, I said, listen, every dime that comes over the budget, start pushing it toward the buffer fund. So that if we have one of them days, and you're guaranteed at some point in your life, you will. When there's, when there's really a rough day and you need to run to the reserves and make a withdrawal, you better have put something there or there won't be anything to draw from. Are you with me? I want us uh, to find our spouses, if you will. I've asked Adam to sing a song for me. Um, and we sing this song to the Lord. Uh, it's called Dove's Eyes. But Solomon wrote it, and he wrote it as a ballad between him and his wife. So find your lover, if you will. Find your spouse. Hold their hands. Why don't you just do me a favor? Just turn and look at them. It's all right. Just turn and you can turn to them. You can get out in the aisle. I don't care. Now we're not gonna climb the palm tree, but. Sing that song for me.